redrafting the 2023 class picks one through 10. I think it's safe to say picks one and two stays the same. Victor Spurs, Brandon Miller, Hornets. Yeah. Yeah. No debate. No debate. I think and this, he, I think this yeah. is where it gets interesting. Uh, pick three, Scoot Henderson. Who would you have there for the Blazers? I personally would have had Keontae George there. Mm. I, I love Keontae George. I, I think there's a case that he made that you take Keontae George there. I mean, um, you know, you look at his struggles, um, you know, Scoot Henderson's trouble, struggles, and you're a little worried about him long term. You don't really know if he's going to, you know, come out of that and be the player he was meant to be. I, I still am optimistic. I, I am a little optimistic about it. I, you know, I heard about the, eye, the eyesight being an issue for him, and uh, he's got he's got goggles now. We're going to see if that affects his shooting and his shooting percentages raise a little bit because of it. But um, And he has all the athletic ability in the world. It, it really is a mental thing with him and just getting over certain things of that nature. But Keontae George is special. I, 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 I like them when we were heading into the draft. Uh, he's a much better passer than even I – Gave him credit for going into that draft as we talked about it. And there's clips and all that of me talking about him. Um, but I, I think he's it makes that offensive ability, the offensive potential he has with his passing. Uh, you know, he has to get better defensively, but I think he's he'd be a really good pick for them at three. I don't think I don't I think the Blazers wouldn't regret it at all if he was on, on the Blazers right now. He's a young piece that they have there that they can move for in a, in a trade if they want to get aggressive or they can keep him and build around him and um see what he turns into. But I like him a lot. I do, I, I really do. Um, but yeah, I go there. I, I, I'll go Keontae for sure. Miles, you go on Keontae being that, you know, they drafted a guard, so they obviously wanted a guard to go with Jeremy Grant and DeAndre Ayton and that whole crew over there and Anthony Simons. I'd honestly flip it and go amen. Mm -hmm. um, honestly, if he was a better shooter and all this stuff and maybe had a better year on the surface – we're talking about him and Brandon Miller as like the second best player. Cause defensively that kid is going to be all defensive many, many times. Uh, he's explosive as hell. Once he gets that jump shot, right? Like the sky's the limit. And it's funny that Jalen green ended up coming on towards the end of the year. Cause I was thinking like, all right, he's kind of forcing his way out, but he did. But a man Thompson is like a really, really special player um he plays the game the right way he makes the right play he'll grab rebounds plays defense he does everything you'd want out of a, a player if he's not going to be a star which i think if he develops he can be a star but if he settles in as a role player like he's at least 10 15 years solid in this league like that kid is special agreed easy 10, 15 year pro right there star i don't know yet we'll have to see if that jump shot comes along with him but definitely so at number four they drafted amen thompson who do y'all replace at four i know Maz, you said amen went earlier if he doesn't i'm keeping amen there personally hmm. i'd say scoot I, I mean i think scoot with the rockets they they need a guard sure they got van vliet but uh, Talent-wise, I'd say Scoot is better. He'll eventually be a better player than what Fred is, and he'd add a, a different element that they don't have in that starting lineup currently. So, yeah. I mean, they were letting Amen run point, basically, for the time that Fred was out. So if you put a, a legit point guard in there, and sure, the, the vision, I mean, we saw the goggles. He clearly wasn't himself. For most of the the year last year, I mean, he did have moments towards the end of the year, but uh, I expect him to take a, a jump in year two in Portland. Um, but for the Rockets, that would be the home run. Like this is a guy who going into that draft, it was between him and Victor. I mean, not really, but that was those are the two top prospects that they really talked about as far as uh, the top of the draft goes. So. To get him at four would be a steal. I think there's a case to be made for Amen or, or a Thompson there for sure. I, 
I, his jump shot will come along. He'll get better at it, and that's the one red flag there. I think there's a case for Derek Lively to go top five in this draft class on the back end. So if they went Derek Lively here, which is probably what I'll say, I'll probably go with him. Um, there's no problem with that. He's he he was just tight. He was Tyson Chandler. Um, upon just entering the league, that's what he was in year one, right? So that's pretty exciting when you have a player that good and that dynamic near the rim. He made a three during the playoffs. If he could add that to his game even a little bit, he's really, really dangerous to play five out with him too. But he's just such a good roller, a good screener, uh, a defensive presence getting blocked at the rim. I think if you take that guy, you have you really – I mean, you ignore – when you're picking that high in the, in the draft, you don't pick for need, you pick for talent. And so – He's easily one of the more talented guys that went in this draft class. I can see him going in a redraft, top, top three, top four, right? He's that he's that talented. That would have been a nice to see that, to have him next to Sengun. Sengun mm-hmm. is to play the four. Mm-hmm. And Lively is playing the five, locking up the paint. With how Jalen Green came on last year, Fred Van Vliet, and just how Ime Udoka likes the coach from what we've seen, that would have been – they got it. They got it right with Amen, but that would have been nice to see. The Detroit Pistons on the hook for uh, about 60 mil to Monty Williams. They took Asar Thompson. Who would y'all have taken at five? I don't, I don't think they regret it. Take, I don't think they regret taking Asar Thompson there, obviously. Uh, but if I'm looking at this class again, I, they're, I'm bringing a guy like Jaime Hawkins Jr. up. And I know he's a role player and everything like that. But alongside Cade and those guys, I think you're in a redraft. You can draft him higher than, than far higher than what you went. And he can be justified as a top five pick in this class because his game was already made to be a role player, an elite role player in the NBA. But he's going to get better. He's going to get better. And he may never be – he's never going to be like an all-star necessarily, but you never know. I don't, I don't want to stand on that. But it, drafting a really good role player at pick, what, five? Is it five or on right now or four or five? five at pick five that's that's tough to do in this league you got guys you we've drafted guys at five but we weren't even the nba five years later two years later three years later you know they don't even make it past the rookie contract sometimes so i have no problem if they went with that direction uh taking jaime that early on because he really was that good in year one uh i would keep it i would still keep it as far honestly i mean this team that that's more of a, a team that can win immediately type of pick like you're not supposed to be picking that high and you're gonna bounce back and and uh compete that year like the pistons they're not competing they're not really competing it doesn't seem like in the near future i don't know what they're doing they're on the hook for a lot of money with monty but um they do have pieces they have like talent on this team they just need to kind of cultivate that and be able to coach it to being a, a good team. Because like Cade, special player. Um, Ivy, uh, we'll see. That that kid is um, he's interesting. Like the talent, the talent is there. Like you can't teach that speed. You can't teach some of the things that he does on the court. But um, I don't know. There's also something that just it doesn't really fit with this team. And then. Asar, I mean, same thing with his brother. If he gets a jump shot, if he works on some of those perimeter skills, like they're both freaks. They're both freaks. And you need a wing that can play defense, that can push the pace. Like he's unselfish. They play the game the right way. So um, I think that's another guy that they they need moving forward as far as uh, talent-wise. Or they could have gone for a crazy home run pick. And, I mean, Cam Whitmore, I feel like if he got more time playing in Houston, he'd be higher on this list. But um, because he didn't really get to shine on that Houston team and you got Ime trying to win at all costs, um, he didn't really get to show what he could do. But I think that kid is going to be special. If he gets a chance in Houston, it might be with another team. You know, he might be used in a trade. But Cam, Cam is – he's got it. Re before we go to pick six, just real quick. Pistons, they fire Monty Williams. New GM is there. Who do you think would be a good fit to take over for that job? Which is obviously not one of the most 
appealing jobs out there, I should say. But who do you think possibly would be a good fit for there? Uh, Sam Cassell, maybe Isaiah Thomas comes back to the organization. Who would be a good fit for that uh, Pistons? It's got to be a first-time head coach. It's got to be someone who's never been a coach before because it's hard to get a tenured coach who's been in the NBA for a long time with options to go there. You know, you're not gonna, it's going to be hard to do that. James Rago, you know, I know he got passed up for the Cleveland job. But is he really going to go to Detroit and coach in Detroit? You know, at that point, just go be a top, a top paid assistant coach and wait for the next great opportunity to show up. And hopefully you 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 actually get the job. Right. But I bring in some fresh blood. You know, I've, I've heard names. I heard Sweeney out of Dallas. I heard that name uh, on the Wind Horse podcast. And we, these guys, these are guys that we aren't familiar with. The, the general public public isn't familiar with. But um, the way the Nets went and hired Jordy Fernandez, it's, it's kind of like that. You want to bring in somebody who hasn't done it, but who who has energy, who's young and hasn't done it before and hasn't been, isn't a retread hire at that point, because that's, that's what you think with Monty Williams. You know, you, you, you can't out coach having a lack of talent and they should have won more games than they did. Sure. But you know, they have a lack of talent. They drafted Jaden Ivey and missed. He can't, he can't shoot, right. He, he can't shoot at all. And, and that's a tough thing to overcome from when you're guards, he's passing up open looks or he's taking them and missing them. So it's just one of those things where you, you have to, you know, you have to reassess your whole process, not just the coach, but how you draft, what you're looking at in these players, how you missed on Ivy, right? Where you went wrong and how you can correct that stuff moving forward and get the right people in the building. But I, I'm going with a, uh, you know, a guy who's a long time assistant in the league, who's been itching for an opportunity because you're not getting a top of the line candidate to come take that job. Hopefully Sam Cassell gets a look. Um, he's been a long time assistant trying to get a job. Uh, pick six. This uh, upset a lot of people when we talked about pick six uh, before. You know, Miles wasn't on board for drafting another guard. They drafted Anthony Black at six, who didn't see that much time uh, this year. Who would you redraft in place of Anthony Black? Uh For that magic team. It's where it was where that team is and I know, where they, they don't need they don't need any more guards. I just well, we look at the draft list of list of players that went in this draft class, and you're gonna find that pretty quickly that you know there are only really guards to choose from. Uh and a lot of guys didn't perform. So if I were them. It's either I'm going Pod, Pod Zemski from the Warriors because they were a team that won. They were a team that won. They the, the, the Magic won, and he fits onto a winning team, takes charges, can make an open three. Not a great three-point shooter, but can certainly make an open three. Um, and he's going to play. He's going to force his way out into the floor and be an impact player for you. And maybe when you play playoff, maybe when you a playoff game because he gets a million rebounds. He's an amazing rebounder. Um, so I, I would probably go that direction. Uh, you could make the case for Jordan Hawkins too. Who out of UConn who shoots the, the skin off the ball and considering how the premium they're putting on shooting right now and looking for shooting Hawkins would have made a lot of sense for them I don't think you would have went wrong with either pick Hawkins considering his ability to shoot the ball and what they need now and what they needed in the playoffs makes a lot of sense because Hawkins had some really good games under the radar he was really really good um so I I could see and he's a he's a, he reminds me of like Rip Hamilton type like old school throwback all you know catch and shoot type guy so I really like his game a lot, and I think he would have fit with Orlando well, too. I'd go – I mean, it's a sleeper. Maybe not a sleeper. He was second-team All-NBA, all-rookie. Uh, Kaysen Wallace from OKC. Just because that's another guy who he defends, he can shoot. I mean, he shot the ball at like a 42% clip from the three. So you need shooting around Paolo and Franz and – Suggs for sure. He's not really a shooter, but if you put him next to to Suggs and all those guys, I think that's a, a special team. All right, shout out to Jose on YouTube. We mentioned Bill and Beer. Bill and Beer has some WNBA head coaching experience. I don't think he coached in the NBA, but that might be an interesting pick too, just to bring him back to the organization. Uh, vet knows how to win, so. I've saw that name floated out too, Bill and Beer, Isaiah Thomas coming back. So it'll be very interesting to see what they do going forward with Detroit. Pick seven. They 
They picked Bilal Koulibaly, but they traded him to the Wizards. Who would you pick at seven? Staying with the Pacers, who would you pick at seven? Me personally, you mentioned them last pick. With how they played, I think Jordan Hawkins is another one that would have been mm-hmm. up and mm-hmm. down pace, getting shots up. He probably would have had about five, six threes a game how he shoots the rock. Yeah. Yeah. That's how you could have found him. You know, you got a lot of open looks, a lot of easy shots. I I, I have no problem going in that going in that direction uh with that pick. I don't I don't even have an argument. If I had known, if I had been thinking about the Pacers behind them, I probably would have you know mocked them to go there or whatever, or you know, just redrafted him to go there. Um, so yeah, I'll go Jordan Hawkins. I think the shooting ability with on that team, it'd have been trouble for the league because they had no problem scoring as it was without him. Can you imagine if they had had him, what it would have looked like, you know? Uh, for this pick, I would put Derek Lively here. I mean, we saw it in the playoffs, even against the Knicks, they really struggled with rebounding. And that was one of their biggest things. If not for injuries, they would have got bounced by the Knicks. But it showed in the Celtics series, they just need more toughness and someone with a better motor. Like Miles Turner grabs like, what, six boards a game, if that. So you're not really getting that from him. So now you're asking your guards and all that stuff to try to grab boards. And sure, you know, TJ McConnell can uh, Jose Alvarado his way into a couple boards. But, like, he's not someone you want to rely on. Like Derek Lively's shown it on the highest stage, like the finals, and he's a guy that you can rely on. And he'll run. Like he's not one of these plotting bigs. Like he can run the floor. That's what Tyrese wants to do. So imagine the lob threat that they'd have with uh, Derek Lively on that team. Number eight, Washington Wizards went with Jairus Walker, who we replace at that pick. He was traded to the Pacers. Who will we take there? Oh, talent and potential, what we've seen. Hmm. I'd go, I'd go Clowney. No Clowney. I think sleeper from the Nets. He didn't really get much playing time for most of the year until t- the end. But I think when we look back at this draft, maybe three, four years from now, we'll be saying like that kid should have gone way earlier. Why didn't he go earlier? He's talented. He's a what power forward. I can shoot the three and is mobile like that. Like that's the perfect player for this league right now. So um, that'll be my surprise pick for the Wizards. I mean, what do they have to lose? They're losing already. So why not go for a home run pick in uh, or a, a underrated pick like Noah Clowney and hope that your your uh, development staff can get the most out of him because I think that kid is probably one of the top two or three talented players on that Nets roster right now. So I don't disagree. He came on, he played well at the end of the year. Um, that pick there. I mean, I've kind of taken a lot of the guys in the back end of this draft already that I like. Um, if I was going to, I didn't, I didn't pick Hassan Wallace yet. So I probably go there because he just showed, he showed a lot of promise and they need everything. There's not a position that they have enough of over there. So, and there's, you know, they're, look, they're getting ready to tear this thing down to the studs even more and get rid of a Ty's Jones and other guys like that they've gotten. Um, so clearly, you know, any, any infusion of talent they can get they they'll, they'll gladly welcome. And Kassan Wiles gives them that he can shoot the ball. He played really well over in OKC and uh, knocked down threes, drove to the rim. They played a really good, just driving kick basketball. So I like them. I like them. And he defended, he defended, he earned minutes as a rookie on a team that, did something this year, obviously. So yeah, I'd probably go with him. Yeah, the Wizards. That's another thing to look forward to this offseason. They could be big in trade talks. It could be a lot of movement going on with them. And like you said, it seems like it's back in rebuild again. And they're gonna be left with Jordan Poole and Bilal Kulabali. Yeah. That's how it's looking. At number nine, the Jazz took Taylor Hendricks. Keeping Taylor at in Utah or replacing him? I mean, I'd, I'd replace him, quite honestly. Um, and I know, and and I know this is you know, and this is interesting because I kind of chose two guys in Podmin, Podzimski, and then Hawkins, right? Let's say we went, let's say we went 
let's say with Pazinski in that pick and Hawkins another pick that I we spoke about. Um to kind of look that I'd probably take Marcus Sasser uh in, in a redraft. I liked his, his minutes a lot. I thought he was good. Um he had a strong first two, three months of the season. And he's he's a, and I we like we like I like them coming up the draft. I really did. I you know I talked about Houston a lot and what they do there and what Kelvin Sampson does over there and him being one of the better coaches in the world, in my opinion. But um yeah, I think he'd be a nice fit over there uh as well. I I really do. I, I think he's a really good player and I think that he has a bright future in the NBA. For Utah, I mean the way the board's sliding and I mean, I talked about him earlier, but Cam Whitmore, um, I mean, a kid 6'7", 220 already at like 19, 20 years old coming in the league. And you need – I mean, you're not going to be able to sign a free agent, if we're being honest, to come to Utah and all that stuff. So you're going to have to rely on the draft and all that. This kid, he, he's got talent. Like, you can't teach some of the movements and – athleticism that he has and the strength that he plays with like there's a ferocity that he plays with that you're not really going to get from like many 19 year olds so um i know there's talks of them maybe moving laurie but like if you had another player like cam you've already got what uh sexton i mean he might be on the move too but like you've got sexton and marketing and then you add whitmore to that that's a solid little core even though I, i'm sure laurie's got to get paid at some point but like now you're building something like cam cam showed in spurts that on the right team in the right fit like he can really he can really show out so at number 10 the mavs took case and wallace who was traded to okc at 10th pick who would you have taken for the mavs I'm gonna go with Cam Whitmore because uh, I haven't chosen him yet, and he, off town alone, he deserves to be a t- top ten pick. So, I, you know, an embarrassment of riches if they took him and having him on the bench and waiting for him to take his turn. And and with a team like OKC, you need all the young talent you can get because you're not necessarily retaining great players in OKC. So just being able to replace like a great player with another good player and continuing that 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 trend like Sam Presti's done, it makes a lot of sense. I'd go Podzemski here. I mean, he'd be able to give Luca a break at some points. He can run the point. He can. He, he's got a, a a great game for for the league, and he's a great fit on Golden State as is. But if we're going off the redraft, and he's able to still be there at ten, like this is a home run pick. Like that's what they were missing. They were missing other guys that can actually do something besides Kyrie and Luca. Like if they're not creating for anybody else the hell are they supposed to do like that's why this finals is so boring because it's like i mean you're relying on two guys solely i mean granted lebron and kyrie it was sort of the same thing but you got you got stuff out of like jordan richard not, jefferson, richard jefferson they are smith like you got stuff from like some of those Kevin love yeah it was literally nothing there's nothing you're getting from the bench or your starters at that so um you bring in a guy like this, he's what, 6'5", 6'4", 6'5", like a, a two, three-year college player right here. Like, with Luka, with Kyrie, you need guys who are ready to kind of produce now. Like This is one of those teams that I was talking about, that you're not going to draft a guy who needs to develop. Because what the hell? Luka's not – he doesn't have patience for that. Like He's soon going to start throwing out shade to the Mavs like, yeah. I don't know about Dallas, man. It's hot out here. Like sly comments, like what LeBron would say or something like that. So you gotta start to develop that uh, that nucleus around Luca. 